Number 23. Letter A. A light rail commuter train accelerates at a rate of 1.35 meters per second squared. How long does it take to reach its top speed of 80 kilometers per hour starting from rest? All right, so let's just uh, sketch a very quick picture. So let's just call the dot the, uh, the train, right? And it's gonna be moving forward. And it's starting at, it says it starts from rest, right? So its initial velocity must be zero, okay? I'm gonna use the uh, units of kilometers per hour because it looks like that's um, what they're giving in the problem. Um, then it also says, yeah, it doesn't, yeah. Well, actually, you know what? Let me write it in meters per second for right now. It doesn't really matter because it's zero, okay? But I'm just gonna write it in meters per second for now. The, uh, it wants to know how long it takes, right, to reach its final speed of 80 kilometers per hour. So the final velocity here is 80 kilometers per hour. And again, remember it's asking for how long, right? the time here it's going to take to go from the start to the end, okay? And it gives us another piece of information. It also says that it is accelerating, right, at a rate of 1.35 meters per second squared. Okay, so let's look at what we're given here, right? We, we know the acceleration, we know the initial velocity, we know the final velocity, and we're looking for time. So, do we know of a formula that relates the, these four variables? So let's take a look at all the formulas. I'm gonna put it on the upper right-hand corner. So now if you do take a look, um, it looks like we can use the first formula, right? The one all the way at the top. So let's use that one, all right? So this is for letter A, I'm gonna put it over here. So for letter A, we'll use the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus the acceleration multiplied by time. Now, what you have to make sure is that you have to make sure all the units are consistent, okay? And unfortunately in this problem, if you look closely, they gave us a final velocity in kilometers per hour, but then they gave us our acceleration in meters per second. So both the displacement, the, the displacement unit of meters is not the same, right? One's meters, one's kilometers. And then the time value is also not the same. One's in seconds, one's in hours. So we have to make sure that they're consistent. So what this tells me is that I need to do a conversion. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna convert this into meters per second so that I do have consistency amongst my units. So let's do that um, at the bottom here. So we're gonna do 80 kilometers. So actually, let me give myself a little room. Let me do it up here on the top, okay? So let's do 80 kilometers per hour, per one hour that is, right? And we wanna convert that into meters per second. So think about this in a three-step process. Step one, convert kilometers to meters. Okay, I'll write a, little, write a little one there. Step number two will be to convert hours into seconds. And then step number three here will then be to divide your meter value by the second value. Okay, so part number one. So 80 kilometers, convert that into meters. So 80 kilometers, kilometers on the bottom, meters on the top. There's a thousand meters in one kilometer, so the kilometers cancel. And this leaves me with now 80,000 meters. Okay, great. So that's the first part there. The second part now, is going to require us to go from one hour to seconds. So let's start with what we're given, one hour. I'll put hour on the bottom, but I can't put seconds yet because I don't know the relationship, meaning how many seconds there are in an hour. By the way, that's 3,600, 3, but let's just assume that we don't know it, but we do know the minutes to hours, right? So that's 60 minutes in an hour. The hours go away. And then I would put the minutes on the bottom and now the seconds on the top. So that'd be 60 seconds in one minute. And again, as I mentioned before, 3,600 seconds. Great. So now for the third step of this conversion, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take then the answer to the first part, 80,000 meters, divide that then by the 3,600 seconds. And when I do this division, I will get meters per second. So take out your handy-dandy calculator, 
80,000 divided by 3,600. And I'm going to do, um, what do we have here? So let's do three significant figures because that's actually what we were given. I was a little sloppy here. If you go back to the problem, notice how they gave us 80.0, right? And I was just using the simple value of 80 here. Um, it won't change the value, but it'll change the amount of significant figures we go out to. So let's just be consistent. So it, it would come out to be 22.2 meters per second. Okay, great. So now this value right here that I calculated, I'm going to use as my final velocity. So these two values are equivalent. 80 kilometers per hour is the same thing as 22.2 meters per second. So I can use them interchangeably, but when I have to uh, use the final velocity in my formula, I have to make sure the units are consistent again. So let's now finally plug in the values. So the final velocity in the equation will be 22.2. I'm gonna leave the units out just to make it neater. The initial velocity was zero. The acceleration was 1.35. And I'm looking for time. Okay, so this just simply works out to 22.2 is equal to 1.35 times t. Divide out then the 1.35. Divide out the 1.35. And we have now t equaling, let's see, 22.2 divided by 1.35. So 16.4. So we've got 16.4 seconds. Why is it in seconds? Because that's the time value of all the other units. Okay, so we answered part A. So this is the answer for part A. Okay, now let's take a look now at part um, B. It says the same train ordinarily decelerates at a rate of 1.65 meters per second. All right, so let me just do a quick highlight here. So the train is now decelerating at 1.65 meters per second squared. Now, how long does it take to come to a stop from its top speed? Okay, so now if I continue the picture on out over here, sorry, if I continue the picture on out, what I would notice is that basically I'm going to start now the second part of the problem, part B, from the same uh, location here in red. And now I'm going to be moving, it's still moving to the right, right? The object is still moving to the right, but it's going to be slowing down. Okay. So I know that if I'm considering now this yellow line as the frame of my problem, this point now actually becomes the initial value. And the end point here becomes my new final value. Okay, it's very important in physics in terms of framing the problem. So the initial velocity, it started out in the yellow frame here. It started out at 22.2 meters per second. The final velocity of this frame is zero because it said it came to a stop. And now it says that it is decelerating, right? Which means the acceleration is? negative. Okay, so the acceleration is a negative 1.65. I'm just going to write the units down here, meters per second squared. Okay, so now again, we need to find the time, right? They're asking us now for the time here. So I need to think of a relationship between initial velocity, time, acceleration, and final velocity. And again, we can use that same formula, right? So that works. So let me write part B over here on the right-hand side. So we would use the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus the acceleration multiplied by time. So the final velocity in this problem was zero. The initial velocity was 22.2. The acceleration was a negative 1.65. And again, I'm looking for the time. So that's my variable. So now when we do the math, right, this simply becomes zero is equal to 22.2 minus 1.65 t. Great, add the 1.65 t to both sides. Add 1.65 t to both sides. There's the line, there we go. Now the time becomes, not the time, but the left-hand side becomes 1.65 t, and that will equal 22.2. Now simply divide out the 1.65, right? In order to get t by itself. Take out that calculator. 
and 22.2 divided by 1.65. And notice how we get a value of 13, again, I'm gonna use four, uh, three sig figs, 13.5. Seconds, that is. Why seconds? Because go back and look at all the time values uh, or the time units in the other um, variables. Okay, and notice the time came out to be positive, which it should be. Time won't be uh, negative. Okay, so part B is done. This is the answer now to part B. And then finally, part C. It says, uh, in emergencies, the train can decelerate more rapidly. Okay, let's start highlighting some stuff. It says the train can decelerate more rapidly, coming to a rest from 80.0 kilometers per hour in 8.3 seconds. What is its emergency deceleration in meters per second? So it's asking us to calculate for the acceleration, right? But it, the acceleration will just be negative. So let's do that particular calculation over here on the top left. So let us see. Let's write down what we know. So it sounds like uh, it says uh, the train is coming to a rest, right, from 80.0 kilometers per hour. Now remember, the 80.0 kilometers per hour is the same thing as, I already did the conversion, it's the same thing as 22.2 meters per second, okay? Now this value will represent in part C, it should represent the initial velocity because the problem is, is framed as such where we're starting, right, with some velocity, and then it's coming to a stop here. So the end part, uh, the ending of the problem, I apologize. There's a lot of barking. I think my dog may have just eaten the mailman. Um, or still is. But anyway, don't mind the distraction. Well, seems like stuff is really unraveling downstairs. Yeah, what are you going to do? <laughs> anyway, so the final velocity here is zero. Okay. The initial velocity then will be the value I just found uh, before when I did the conversion. Okay. And they told me that the time it takes to go from the initial state to the final state will be 8.30 seconds. Okay, so great. So now we should have enough information in order to uh, solve the problem, right? They're asking us what is the acceleration. So if we think about the relationship between all the variables, we would be again using the same formula. The final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus the acceleration multiplied by time. Final velocity here is zero. As we mentioned, the initial velocity will be 22.2. The acceleration is what we're trying to find. And the time, it says, will be 8.30. Okay, so let's just do the math. I can already um, see that I'll, let me subtract over the 22.2, right? 22.2, that cancels. This is now negative 22.2. And you'll see how this, these values, the sign values, will all make sense in a second. Now divide out the 8.30 from both sides. That cancels. And now I'll write the acceleration value over here to the right. So take negative 22.2 and divide it by 8.3. And again, three significant figures. So we get negative 2.67. 2.67. And that's in meters per second squared. All right. Notice how the acceleration did work out to be negative, which is what we anticipated it to be because it told us that the train is decelerating. So, guys, I hope this helped. This was a longer problem, many steps to it. It's almost like three problems in one. So, thanks for tuning in. And uh, remember, if it if it helps, um, if it helps you, please help us by subscribing. Thank you.